So welcome everyone um, to those who are with us live um, and to those who are listening to the recording. I know it's um, Joburg school holidays, so a lot of people are out of routine for three term school holidays. Um, but welcome to those who are here and especially anyone joining for the first time. Um, it's lovely to have you and we hope that you will find this nourishing and supportive. So for those who have got oils, um, you might want to use some of your oils now to help anchor or calm you. So I always love my frankincense roller and it's a gift for anyone who gets oils this month, but frankincense is so calming and grounding. It's good for meditation and prayer. It's good for anxiety and stress. And then also I'm doing a, I'm in Joburg again, and I'm doing a workshop or well, like a presentation for Chartered Wealth's um, female clients today for a woman's um, day thing that they're doing. And we've made them little calm rollers, which if any of you have been around for a while will know it's one of my favorite, favorite rollers. So it's got lavender, peppermint and frankincense. And we're going to be talking, so I'm putting it now in <laughs> anticipation. And um, we're going to be talking a bit more about the healing powers of nature. Um, and then talking about also how we can use the lavender and mint in our garden to support us, but also how we can use nature to support us physically and emotionally. So um, <clears throat> that's the, those are the oils I've got. And I always encourage anyone, if you'd like to put two to three words on how you are feeling this morning or how you are, it's just always nice because then it feels like a two-way conversation as opposed to just me. But um, also if you are walking or you're not able to, or if it's tricky, then please also I'd rather not, um, yeah, you don't have to do it at all. So today is um, Wednesday, the 28th of August, and it's also Moses, um, Moses' birthday. And Moses has worked for our family for 17 years. He, um, from the day that we, uh, I can see my mum's just as because she's staying in our house in Natal and uh, Moses is there. Um, and he's been um, staying, yeah, he's worked for our family for 17 years from when we first back, came back from the UK and Pippa was just 18 months old and now she's 18 years old. So Moses has been part of our family and such a support and his hard work and reliability and um, his dedication and his love for our family has been amazing. So I just want to dedicate this session to him um, on his birthday today and to wish him a very special um, birthday and a happy and healthy year. So last Monday night was full moon. Um, we didn't have a session last Wednesday, but so that's why I'm just touching base on last week. So it was that full moon, blue moon, super moon that I think none of us could miss. It was such a spectacular moon. Um, a blue moon is in fact just a second, second full moon in a calendar month. So that's why it happens once in a blue moon, because it doesn't happen often having two full moons in a calendar month. But the, a full moon is all about heightened energy and having two in one month just really heightens the energy. There is so much going on in the world at the moment. So last, um, but the full moon in Leo um, is a very benevolent, benevolent and abundant full moon. So it was just really a perfect time and perfect backdrop for our the women in finance events last week that I um, attended and presented at and um, they were just such great events and if you know anyone who works in the finance industry um, like in a bank or in a brokerage or investment banking really encourage them to look into joining the women in finance um, they call it a hive because it's like yeah that's what the busy bees are, <laughs> the busy little worker bees which are the female bees but it's a connection and a community and um, I met such lovely beautiful ladies and the the event I felt so privileged to be able to attend twice and I mean the second time I was even the first time and second time I was taking notes and writing photos uh, sorry write, writing notes taking taking photos I just it filled my tank so much. They were so such incredible speakers and presenters. So I just loved being there. Um, yeah. And so next week is the new moon in Virgo um, on, between the 2nd and 3rd of September. And again, those of you who've been around for a while will know that I listen quite a lot to Pam Gregory, who's an amazing astrologer. Um, and I, I, I listen often only listen just before I do these mindful moments because um, it helps me to prepare and know what's going on in the world. 
but I'm always so grateful that I have. Um, and so I really encourage you to as well, because what I share with you are really just tiny snippets of what she, what she talks about. So um, astrologically, there is just so much happening at the moment, as I said, and, and in the months to come. I mean, it's just like when you listen to her, it is a little bit, um, you can think, oh my goodness, I, I can't even start to keep track of what she's saying. But in summary, she says it's going to be colorful, concentrated, eventful, intense. There's barely going to be an area of life that's going to be the same. Um, so her encouragement for us is to stay centered and to to connect with our inner anchor, to come back to our breath and to our heart space. And this is the most important thing we can practice at this time, in my opinion, and to share with our loved ones, because we're all trying to navigate this, this crazy world. And this really is the only way we're going to find our, our way through it. So she, she quoted two wonderful quotes. One is by Mr. Krishnamurti, which said, the world is a projection of yourself. It cannot be transformed until you are. And so our reality is a projection of what we're feeling inside. And we can change our heart coherence. This is what we practice in these mindful moments. This is what we want to become so good at that it's just second nature. Um, we can change our breath. We can, we can regulate our breath. And that can change our thoughts and our emotions. Instead of the other way around, we can't change our thoughts to change our bodies. We want to change our bodies to change our thoughts and our emotions. And that can then consequently affect our external reality. And so not ignoring the horrific events that are going on in the world and not ignoring the sadness and the, the tough things that we are all, many of us are dealing with on a daily basis. But we have to realize that the only way we're going to change the world is by changing our own level of consciousness and our own frequency so that it becomes inconceivable and unthinkable to harm another human being um, or, or to cause hurt to anyone. Um, so yeah, so that is his quote. The world is a projection of yourself. It cannot be transformed until you are. And we feel so powerless when we see things going on and it feels like the world is heading into war. And this is something that is powerful that we can actually do. And she also did a, um, she read a passage from Ella Nost, who is a, um, it looks like she's a parenting um, expert and it looks like she's actually quite, I did a quick dive into her. She's, um, written some parenting books. She's a mother of six children, lives with her four younger children in Florida. But this is, I'd, I'd encourage you just to let these words la land as I read them. Here's to the bridge builders, the hand holders, the light bringers, those extraordinary souls wrapped in ordinary lives who, are quiet, who quietly weave threads of humanity into an inhumane world. They are the unsung heroes in a world at war with itself. They are the whisperers of hope that peace is possible. Look for them in this present darkness. Light your candle with their flame and then go. Build bridges, hold hands. Bring light to a dark and desperate world. Be the hero you are looking for. Peace is possible. It begins with us. So I just thought that those were so appropriate for us for today. And our, our poem is all about remembering to breathe and we will start that shortly. But I, I want to remind those who've been around for a while of our take five breath and then teach it to others who, who may be new. It's one that we often teach at schools and it's very regulating and calming. It's a very good way of getting our body into coherence. And I love having the physical action because I find that my mind can sometimes be so busy that I start by thinking about my breathing. And after three breaths, I'm thinking about a million other things and I've forgotten that I'm meant to be focusing on my breathing. And when I do something physically, it helps me to anchor. It's also a lovely tool that you could start by teaching children um, or family members. So there are two ways of doing it. I'm gonna show you both now. Um, the one is tracing an outline of your hand. So um, when you breathe in, you just trace your index finger slowly up your thumb. And as you breathe out, down again, breathing in, we go up and out, we go down and in, we go up. 
And of course, by the time you finish your hand, you've done five coherent breaths, which is almost a minute of breathing if you've slowed your breath down, which is even a minute of coherent breathing can also alter our physiology. Then the other way of doing it is putting our fingers tips together. And a lot of youngsters like doing this under their desk while they're waiting for their test papers to be handed out and things like that, the exam papers. So fingers together like this. And then as you breathe in, you expand a little bit like your rib cage and your belly are expanding. And as you breathe out, you relax and contract. Well, not contract, it's like a getting, letting go. And then breathing in and letting go. And then again, breathing in and letting go. So we're going to start by, you can choose whichever way you want to do that. Um, and we I invite you now just to settle where you are now and just to anchor your feet on the earth, feel your seat on your cushion or chair, and just to drop your gaze or close your eyes. And we're just going to do five coherent breaths in your own time. Just breathing in and out. Breathing in and out. Breathing in and out. Breathing in. and out, breathing in, and out. And you can continue with this as I read these words to you. It only takes a reminder to breathe, a moment to be still, and just like that, something in me settles, softens, makes space for imperfection, the harsh voice of judgment drops to a whisper, and I remember again that life isn't a relay race, that we will all cross the finish line, that waking up to life is what we were born for. As many times as I forget, catch myself charging forward without even knowing where I'm going, that many times I can make the choice to stop, to breathe, and be, and walk slowly into the mystery. So letting these words land as we bring our awareness into our body, allowing our attention just to drop into our belly as a leaf might drift down and land on the surface of the pond. So just following each breath so that it settles in your chest and in your belly space. This feeling with each breath, how it might anchor and ground you into your chest, your belly, onto your seat. If thoughts start to wander, just gently guiding them back into your belly space. Noticing a gentle expansion on an inhale and then letting go on an exhale. Just holding a posture of upright dignity and noticing the, the strength and the sovereignty that our spine and our pelvis, 
our shoulders, our whole skeleton offers us. Noticing our pelvic bones, our seat on our cushion or chair, and then a slow unraveling of our spine, our shoulders, our neck, our head towards the sky. Just gently inviting a softening to your shoulders, maybe just letting go just a little bit more in your shoulders. And feeling into this strength, this support, the sovereignty that lies here. And then just dropping into the softness of your belly space, of the organs that lie within and are protected by your spine and your rib cage, the organs that sit in your pelvic bowl, in your abdomen, in your chest and heart space. And just feeling into the softness and the allowing that lies here. Allowing for movement and change with every breath, with digestion, with all our bodily functions. There's constant adaption and constant life force energy in these areas of stuff of softness. Now bringing your attention into your heart space and just allowing it to settle there. Offering a, a feeling of gratitude for this moment, for this moment of breath, for this moment of being in your body. And just connecting with this feeling of gratitude in your heart space. Noticing if it has a physical color, light, texture. Just really feeling into it as you breathe. And allowing every breath to strengthen and expand this energy of gratitude, of connection, of love. that you may even feel it expanding beyond your heart space into your whole chest, ribs, abdomen, pelvis. So it might fill your whole thoracic cavity, your whole, in fact, it might even seep into right through your body, into arms and legs, into fingers and toes. Just noticing the energy, lightness, texture, and breathing into it. So that it might even feel like a, it permeates through our skin and even expands around us almost like a bubble. It's like a bubble of light.
both encasing us and radiating out into the world. I'm just sitting here for this moment, nowhere to be, nothing to do, just being here in gratitude and love and connection. your thoughts start to wander into future imaginings or past holdings on, just noticing that and gently guiding your attention back to your heart space, to your body, like you may gently guide a child or a puppy. Just noticing each breath and with each breath feeding the feeling of gratitude, connection and love. Knowing that this is available for us at any time. It only takes a reminder to breathe, a moment to be still. And just like that, something in me settles, softens, makes space for imperfection. The harsh voice of judgment drops to a whisper. And I remember again that life isn't a relay race, that we will all cross the finish line, that waking up to life is what we are born for. As many times as I forget, catch myself charging forward without even knowing where I'm going, that many times I can make the choice to stop, to breathe and be, and walk slowly into the mystery. And as we sit in this mystery, just taking our last few breaths of the session, you may even want to rest your hands on your heart space to anchor the feeling so that you can return to it whenever you need during your day by resting your hands on your heart space and just taking a few breaths. And then gently moving fingers and toes, maybe rubbing your thighs, giving yourself a, a hug or a shoulder rub, just slowly anchoring into your body. And then when you're ready, opening your eyes and just taking in the colors, the light, the names and faces on the screen. As we come back to this, world in our days and Pam Gregory talked about us being like light bubbles and imagining ourselves like light bubbles and so often that's what we do in our our mindful moments and that each of these bubbles connects then with other bubbles and I mean I could just feel the connection with these bubbles that we have here virtually but as we go through our day connecting with other bubbles in our communities in our cities, in our countries. And, and so she talked about these connecting across the world, almost like grids of light that stretch across, across the world. Um, and that's us. We are the bridge builders and the hand holders and the light bringers. So I hope that this 
session was helpful and supportive to you. Um, if it was and you want to share it, please do. The recordings will be on my website and my YouTube channel. So more than welcome to invite anyone to, to join us uh, next week live or to listen to recordings. And I'll just read that um, that one quote again, and then I'll unmute and would love to hear your check-ins or experiences. Here's to the bridge builders, the hand holders, the light bringers, those extraordinary souls wrapped in ordinary lives who quietly weave threads of humanity into an inhumane world. They are the unsung heroes in a world at war with itself. They are the whisperers of hope that peace is possible. Look for them in this present darkness. Light your candle with their flame and then go. Build bridges, hold hands, bring light to a dark and desperate world. Be the hero you are looking for. Peace is possible. It begins with us. So I look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, please do feel free to unmute or share anything in the chat as to any of your experiences or how how you were, you how you are. I'd love to hear. Thanks, Nancy. It's lovely to be here to have you here. Oh, are you in the bush? Oh, enjoy. How beautiful to be doing this in the bush. Thank you. It is really lovely. Thank you so much. Lovely to be here. Oh, well, thank Nancy. you for joining. Yeah. I'll post the quote in our mindful moments um, group, definitely. Yeah. Thank you, Sue. Yeah, thank you for the cyber resonance. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. Thank you, Hilda. Hilda says, thank you so much, Nikki. Always a beautiful start of the day with you all. Hashtag extraordinary souls wrapped in ordinary lives. I love that. I love that. Gonna have to use that hashtag more often. Um, so thank you all. Wishing you a blessed day and see you next week. Thank you, Sal. Oh, uh, thank you. Well, I hope it's gonna be a lovely day. Love, much love to you all. Bye.